Hey, 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 friends. Welcome or welcome back. My name is Crystal, and today's video is part of the Unique Antique Challenge. This challenge is hosted by myself and the lovely Mel over at Colored Caboose Creations. This Unique Antique Challenge is the Pet Edition Challenge, so where do you take a piece of furniture or build something with those furry friends in mind? So I'm going to remove these drawer slides. I'm going to take one of them and replace this one with one of the drawer slides because as you can see, this one is broken. So when you pull the drawer out, it just like falls down. So there's nothing for the little bracket in there to catch on because the sides on this are completely broken off. So I will be replacing that with one of those. So I'm just going to reuse those. I'm going to cut out this piece here. And I'm also going to remove that. So it's just going to be all open. I'm not going to have any um, drawers here. I'm going to have the top drawer, the second drawer, and this will be all open. And this will become my little pet room. Oh, and look at here. I just noticed we have a little friend. That is a spider cricket. I did all of my prep work off camera. I cleaned everything really well, and then I gave the whole dresser a good scuff sand. I sanded the top all the way down to bare wood. I filled all of my holes with wood bondo and then sanded that all smooth. I then took some spray lacquer and sprayed over my areas that I sanded through the old finish just so that I could prevent any bleed through that I would possibly have. I'm using this really pretty blue uh, Krylon chalk paint that I purchased on the Mistint section at Lowe's. I only paid $2 for a quart, so I've gotten a lot of use out of this paint already, so always check the Mistint aisle every time you go to Lowe's. I'm going to be making some coordinating curtains and a pet bed for my little pet room. So I start out by ironing my fabric and I'm using a duck cloth fabric. So I'm going to measure from the top to the bottom as well as from the left to the right. So I know the measurements of my curtain, but I'm going to add a few inches on both of the top lengthwise and and um, width wise so that way I can account for um, folding over my raw edges to make a nice uh, clean seam when I sew it as well as adding in a little extra for my velcro piece. I'm going to attach my curtain to the back of this piece of wood with some velcro. I might want to do a little bit of a ruffle or a gathered effect. I have everything measured on my cutting mat and I did fold it over a couple of times because my cutting mat is just not large enough. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this whole entire length here because I do plan on making a pillow anyways. And I think it's going to be a good size um, to have the pillow. It's really thick, so i got to push really hard with my rotary cutter. So that's 24 plus 5 would be 29. I'm going to fold it there. Okay, so now I'm going to cut here at 24. And then this will give me a nice, nice size pet cushion. I'm going to fold this in half. And I'm going to cut it there so my curtain opens. Okay, so I ended up cutting it a little bit bigger, which is ended up being really perfect for me because it's, this piece of fabric is 30 inches. So I'm going to cut it in the middle at 15. All right. 
Next, I'm going to get out my sewing machine and I'm going to sew down all my edges. I'm using my iron first to press down my area that I'm going to sew. And this just kind of helps to keep everything flat for when I sew it all down. I'm going to do like three little pleats in each panel. Once I get my pleats or little gathered areas pinned down, I go over to the sewing machine and start sewing everything down. I make sure to back stitch at the beginning and the end as well as over top my little pleats. And this just kind of strengthens that area so my thread doesn't come loose and unravel at the seams or where I sewed everything down. I'm completely self-taught when it comes to sewing. I am by no means an expert. I don't even know if I would consider myself intermediate. With that being said, if you see me make any mistakes, I apologize in advance as this is just me figuring everything out as I go and just kind of doing what I think is the best way to do it. Okay, so here is my Velcro, and I need it to be 26 and a half. So I'm, gonna cut, I'm actually going to do a little bit, a little bit more. 27. I can always cut off the excess. I feel like they have a little bit more than that enough. Okay, so I have cut my Velcro to fit onto my piece of fabric. I'm going to take my bins, I'm going to pin it on. to staple my Velcro up here on the inside um, and try and do this so you can see what I'm doing. All right, you guys, so I'm just going to kind of buzz through this really quick for my pet bed cushion thingy uh, directions. I measured out the little area in my little pet room to see how big I wanted this thing. So I measure out my length and my width, and I'm just cutting two pieces of fabric to that specification. And then I am going to cut the sides for this pillow. I ended up with six different pieces of fabric that were cut to make my pet bed. I had my top, my bottom, which were my two largest pieces, and then my four sides. So I had 
two that would go the length, and two that would go the width. I pinned and I sewed on my short sides first, always making sure I'm sewing right sides together. That way, when I turn my pillow, my pattern will be on the outside and not on the inside. Next, I'm going to pin this here. I pinned on my long sides and then I sewed those together, making sure I was sewing right sides together. Okay, I've got all my panels sewn together. Just got done sewing these on to this piece. So next I'm gonna sew. Then I pinned and I sewed my two short sides together. to um, iron all my seams, open them, iron them open. After I ironed open all of my seams, I went and I pinned everything else together. I took it over to the sewing machine and I just sewed the whole entire thing up. And I made sure I left about a three inch or four inch gap in between one of the larger panels so I could reach in and turn and inside out my pillow. You don't necessarily have to make your own custom pillow or a cushion like I did. It, if you wanted an easier route, you could just make a double-sided pillow and not a six-sided cushion. Or what would be even easier yet is just go to the store and buy one. After I insided out my cushion, I went and filled it with polyfill and then I sewed up my little, my little hole where I stuffed it and where I turned it. I wanted to make some cute little mini throw pillows with some paw prints on them to put inside the pet room. So I drew out a a print pattern on a piece of paper. I cut everything out. I laid it all down on a piece of felt. Then I traced my pattern out. Once I was done tracing, I cut my paw print out of the felt fabric. Then I laid that onto my felt fabric that I was going to use for my mini throw pillows. I pinned everything down and then I took some embroidery floss and a needle and I sewed everything on. I pinned my two pieces of felt together that were going to be for my mini throw pillows uh, right sides together. Then I sewed everything together and I made sure to leave a few inch gap on the bottom of the two pieces so that way I can turn my pillow inside out and stuff it with polyfill. A good idea to cut off the inside corners of the pillows that way when you turn your pillow that fabric isn't all bunched up on the inside. I needed to add some extra support to the bottom of the pet bed area of the dresser so that way it would accommodate any larger pets that might need it. So my husband helped me drill some pocket holes into some pieces of wood that I cannibalized from an old canvas picture frame. 
we added these to the bottom of the pet bed dresser. We used an eighth of an inch plywood for the bottom and the back, and I used the drawer bottoms for the sides of the inside of the pet room area. I stained the bottom and the back piece of the plywood and I painted the two side pieces in the same blue as the rest of the dresser. I used glue and some really small nails to uh, secure the bottom and the back piece as well as the sides. I used my jigsaw to cut out a small notch to fit around a piece of wood that was hindering it from going into place. I used some wax to wax and seal everything. I went to the dollar store and I picked up a bunch of random little cute little wall art items, a chalkboard, um, a little light. So I've cut some macrame cord and I've measured um, to determine how high I want this, and this is just going to be used as my tie back. I'm taking a stapler and I'm putting it on where I want my tie back to be. And then there's that. For my little wall art in the back, I used double-sided foam tape that I bought at the Dollar Tree. And I also added new drawer pulls that I picked up on Amazon, and I will link those below. This is my little pet room dresser. I hope you guys like it. I want to say thank you so much to Mel over at Colored Caboose Creation. And I want to say thank you to everyone who has joined. Make sure you check out the playlist. There will be some amazing, talented artists that will be joining this challenge and this collaboration. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you took some inspiration. I hope you learned something. Thanks again so much. Please remember to like and subscribe, and I hope you all have a great day. Bye.